Hello guys. Okay, it's spooky season. Oh, hi. I'm Sarah. Well, welcome back. Okay, hi, it's spooky season. So I was trying to um, brainstorm some ideas, some video ideas, because this is my favorite season. It really is. And I want to do some fun stuff, but I just don't really know what to do. And I did make a video just like reading um, some of like my favorite scary stories that I found on the internet, but like it's just not the same as telling you a story of something that's happened to me personally. I did uh, film a video of like a year ago, maybe two years ago, talking about some of the weird paranormal things that have happened to me in my life. I also, let me just make this like very, very clear. I firmly believe in the paranormal. I do. I believe in energy. I mean, these days technology is so advanced that there are cameras that can read energy. And when you die, I believe that that energy still exists. I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell you that I've, you know, why you should believe in ghosts. You can believe in whatever you want. And maybe the spooky season for you is not so much about paranormal stuff, but more about, I don't know, serial killers. I'm down for all of it, okay? But today, I wanted to tell a story of something that happened to me, and I'm not gonna say that it is this big paranormal thing, okay? Because I don't know. It was just a really weird, kind of, I don't know, it was just very weird and I can't explain what happened. So I'm gonna sit here and just sip on my wine and tell you about one of the weirdest nights of my life, okay? Grab a glass. It's dry, okay. Okay, so this all starts when I used to work as a waitress in a restaurant in Hollywood. And one of my coworkers was in a play and she invited me to come, she invited everybody to come see her play. So me and another coworker, his name, we'll call him, we'll call him JJ. So me and JJ are like, hey, do you wanna go together and we can carpool? And I told him, I'll, I'll come pick you up. And he was like, yeah, sounds good. So we were going to carpool to go see our other coworker in her play. She gave us the address, she gave us all the details, okay? So I come over that night to come pick him up. He gets in my car and we start driving. And everything felt normal for me, but I noticed that he seemed a little off. I didn't feel off but he seemed a little off. So I didn't mention anything. I just said, you know, well, how was your day? Are you good? And he was like, it was fine. Great, this is gonna be a fun play. So we start driving and I have my GPS going and we're on the freeway and he suddenly, after not saying anything for a while, he looks up and he goes, holy crap, look at the moon. And I looked at the moon and it was huge, huge and bright, like super bright white right above us. And I was like, oh my God, I, I don't think I've ever seen the moon that big before. And we talked for a minute about how crazy the moon looked. And also like, it was another reason why we even noticed the moon was so bright was because it was bright outside. It was nighttime. So we keep driving, we're on the freeway. And as we drive, I noticed this uh, vegan Thai place and JJ was vegan. So I was like, damn, we should have come a little bit earlier. We could have gone and had like, like dinner and then gone to go see the play. And he was like, yeah, we should have done that. We're kind of chit chatting as we're driving, but all of a sudden, maybe 15 minutes later, somehow, I still don't know how this happened. I passed by that restaurant again and I pointed it out and I was like, didn't we just pass this restaurant? And he's like, I don't know. And I was like that, I there was a vegan Thai restaurant. That's why I said we should have come earlier to have dinner there before the play. And he was like, oh yeah. That's so weird. And I'm like, that's so weird. My GPS must be like freaking me out. And then I started to get nervous about the GPS because I didn't want it to just be taking me on some weird route. And then we end up not being able to make it to the play. So I was paying special attention to the GPS and I did notice that it was glitching a little bit and we're driving for a while. And it started to get to a point where I was like, where are we going? So eventually I got so frustrated that we pulled over and I looked at my GPS and I looked at the address and it was not the same address as the one that she gave me. It was something on Pico Boulevard and where we were going was not on Pico. And I was like, wait, what the hell? How did this even happen? So I'm pissed because we just wasted a lot of time driving nowhere and now we're gonna be late to the play. I go back into my phone and I find the address that she sent me. I copy it and I paste it into the GPS and I hit go and it starts going. And then I noticed that it automatically changed the address to the Pico address. So obviously the address that she gave me is 
like maybe, I don't know, maybe she missed a word like South or something. I don't know. So I instead Google the name of the theater and then copy and paste that address into my GPS and it does the same thing. So we have no idea why it's happening. We tried using his GPS, same thing was happening. It was just something weird with this address. When I paste the address into the GPS, before I hit start, it does show me a pin of where it is on the map. And then once I hit start is when it changes the address. So what I did was I copy and pasted the address into the GPS without hitting start. I just zoomed in on the pin in the map and tried to get there just based on like where the pin was. Very stressful. I was really annoyed. We wasted a lot of time. As this is happening, we just got more and more and more lost. And we did end up asking somebody for directions and they had no idea what the hell we were talking about. They were like, Pico. The GPS was having us circling around in different areas in the valley for an address that was on Pico. It just made no, the whole thing made no sense. So eventually I started to run out of gas and we go to a gas station and we're super lost. Like I had no idea where we are. We go to the gas station and JJ says, I'll pump the gas. You go in and ask him for directions. I was like, okay, sounds good. So I go inside and he starts pumping the gas into my car. And I go in and I ask the guy how to get back on the freeway to head back towards the valley, to head south. I'm talking to him for a little bit. And he tells me, you know, like the turns to take to get back on the freeway. I say, thank you so much. And then I go back to my car and JJ is already sitting in the car waiting for me, he was finished. So I get in the car and I start it and I start driving. And I notice that as I'm driving, I would like brake and my car would not brake until I am pushing so hard on the brake, like why aren't you stopping? And then it would like come to a dead stop. It was really freaky. I didn't know why my car was doing this. It kind of normalized a little bit and we still could not find the fucking theater. So I just said, you know what? Let's, do you wanna just go see a movie or something? We're, we're so late, like it's not gonna matter. And he's like, yeah, let's just go see a movie. We go to the Century City Mall and there's an AMC theater there. And we go there and we have some dinner. We're just talking about how weird everything felt. You know, like I told him like, I swear I did not even like exit the freeway yet when I saw that restaurant for the second time. Like, how did that happen? I'm just so freaked out by that. I don't know, man. And then we were making jokes about like, it's the full moon, right? It's just the full moon. So we have some dinner, we go see a movie. After the movie's over, we are heading back to my car, the parking garage and <sighs> We can't find my car. And I knew where I parked. Like this parking structure in the Century City Mall is huge, okay? It's just like parking at Disneyland. You need to make sure that you know where you parked your car or you're gonna be lost for a long time. When we went to the mall, it was kind of late at night and it was pretty much empty. So I didn't take a picture of where we were, but I knew where we parked. We come into the parking structure and my car is not there. And I, it did not even cross my mind that, oh wait, oh crap, like where did I park? I forgot where we parked. No, for me, it was automatically, oh my God, someone stole my car. I know I parked right there. And there was like a good moment of us kind of freaking out, but he kind of calmed me down and was like, okay, we let's just do a lap and make sure that your car is not here we'll figure it out we kind of start walking around and looking for my car and like i said the structure is mostly empty there are some cars there but it's mostly empty before i know it before i even realized what had happened we kind of split apart he and i and started roaming the parking structure alone and didn't say a word to each other it was almost like we both kind of like went into a trance the whole the energy was so weird i feel like i kind of like lost time like I, I just we just both kind of roamed around this empty parking garage separately it was so weird and then i heard jj kind of yell hey sarah and i turn around and across the parking garage he's standing next to my car that was right in front of us. It was so weird, it was so weird. We were roaming around this parking garage, just roaming around and my car was right there. And I was like, how, how did we miss that? And he's like, I don't really know. I just kind of looked up and it was there. And I was like, okay, this night is so weird. Like I'm gonna get in my car, I'm gonna drop you off and I'm gonna go home and probably have a glass of wine. And so we get into my car, I start my car and my car is making weird noises now and it won't start right away. And I was like, what the hell is going on with my car? And right before I put it in drive and start to drive out of the parking structure, I looked down at the clock 
and it was midnight, which means that we were roaming around in this parking structure for two hours. <laughs> two hours roaming around separately in this empty parking garage on the same level, by the way, we didn't go to different levels, on the same level, roaming around separately with our hands in our pockets, not saying a word to each other for two hours. Impossible, impossible. Like there's just no way that that happened. And then all of a sudden he just looks up and sees my car that was right there in the open. For two hours we roamed around and couldn't, see, like it was, it just made, no sense, this is what I'm saying is like, I'm not saying it's paranormal, but it's just, I can't explain how this happened. Did we both have a some kind of weird break? You know what I mean? And I looked down at the clock and I was like, dude, we've been in here for two hours. And I look at him to see his response. And he's just staring straight ahead. Doesn't say a word. It was spooky, like the overall, energy was spooky. It was really weird. And I didn't say another word. I turned my car on. I drove to his house. My car was acting weird the whole time. It wasn't until we started getting closer to his house that I was getting really scared because my car would not break. And when it, it, it wouldn't break until the last second. And it made me scared that my brakes were just going to go out. So I turned to him and I'm like, did you put diesel gas in my car by chance? And he kind of snaps out of his trance and he's like, what? And I'm like, did you put diesel gas in my car? And he goes, I don't know. I don't think so. And I'm like, you don't know? And he goes, I don't remember. And I'm like, was it green or was it black? And he goes, no, I don't remember putting gas in your car. And I was like, okay. <laughs> This night is over, here is your house, get out of my car. It was so weird. Like, so I drop him off and I drive home. When I got home, I went straight into the shower and I took a long, hot shower. And after my shower was done, I got out and walked through the living room to get to the kitchen. And as I was walking through the living room, I heard like a kind of like a tiny, a small crash, like something got knocked over. And I looked behind me and Everything looks in place. I was like, okay, that was weird. I wonder what that was. Didn't really pay much attention to it. It wasn't like a big scary noise. It just sounded like something fell over. So I went to the kitchen and I did whatever I was doing. And then I went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I wake up. Ugh, this is so weird to explain. I wake up because somebody whispered really loudly into my right ear. Could it have been a dream? 100%. Maybe it was the weird night that made me have a weird dream, right? Totally explainable. The whisper felt really real. Like I could feel the hot breath in my ear. And when I woke up, you know, usually when you have a dream, you wake up and you're like, oh my God, what was that? I woke up and snapped my head to the right because I just knew somebody was in my ear. Obviously nobody was there. But the weird thing is that all of my lights were on my bedroom light, my, my bathroom light, which is connected to my bedroom, my living room light was still on. And I wanna say, I know I turned all the lights off, but is there some, you know, chance that I just kind of like laid down on my bed and knocked out without realizing it and like thought that I turned the lights off? Sure, but like, <sighs> I swear I turned all the, I remember getting ready to go to bed. Like I, it was just, I just didn't understand it. And I woke up to somebody like loud whispering into my ear. I don't know what they said. Um, it, I had no idea. There was an S in the word. Cause I remember this really strong in my ear, but I don't know what they said. I don't know if it was a man or a woman. I don't know. It was just a whisper. Could it have been a dream? Yes, I don't know, moving on. I get up and I turn all the lights off and it wasn't even like, man, like I knocked out and left all the lights on. I was positive that I turned all the lights off, so I was freaked out. And then I went into my bed, I turned on, I think, Friends, and I just kind of like put that at a very low volume and put a sleep timer on it for like two hours and then I just kind of watched that and fell back asleep. The next day, my plan was to go down to the my work, the restaurant that I worked at, I didn't have to work, but I knew that JJ was gonna be working and I wanted to see him and be like, what the hell happened last night? So I go downstairs and guess what? 
my car won't start. So I left my car there for the time being, or maybe I take it to the shop, I don't remember. I ended up walking to the restaurant that I worked at for my apartment. It was pretty close by, maybe like a five minute walk. And I saw JJ working, and as soon as he saw me, his face lit up. And like, this is what I'm saying is like, usually when he sees me, we have a pretty good rapport. But for some reason, when I picked him up the night before, he was deadpan. It was just weird. And so this felt more like we were back to normal. So he sees me and he comes up to me and he's like, dude, last night, I'm really spooked about last night. And it was just kind of interesting because I knew that it was a really weird night, but I wasn't exactly scared. He was more scared than I was. And I was like, yeah, it was such a weird night, wasn't it? And he's like, no, you don't understand. And I remember him vividly telling me, the moment I got into your car, I got a weird vibe. And I was like, really? And he's like, yes. Like I, I immediately felt uncomfortable and not because of you. It was just like a really weird, like almost like I had gotten into the car with someone that I was in trouble with. Like that's how it felt. Why? And he's like, I have no idea. But I tried to brush it off. I tried to talk to you like everything was normal, but it just wasn't. And I was like, yeah, I, I felt that. Like I felt a weird vibe with you, but I, you know, we were talking and everything was kind of normal. So like, I didn't think, you know, that, you know, I didn't think that deep into it. And he's like, no, I was trying to act normal, but I felt really uncomfortable in your car. I was really freaked out. And I told him, you know, my car wouldn't start today. And he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I don't know, I, I don't know. Maybe I did put diesel gas in your car. I don't know what happened. I don't remember, but I'm, I'm so sorry. Like I'll pay for it. So I started to get really spooked. And as we were talking about it, this customer was overhearing what we were talking about. I decided to stay and have a beer and after some time that customer eventually ended up coming up to me and being like hey and I knew who he was he was a regular there so I'd seen him before he was like hey I don't want it to sound weird but I was kind of listening to what you and JJ were talking about like about having a weird night last night and I was like yeah it was really weird and he's like I don't want to freak you out but I practice something called Reiki and I was like I know what Reiki is because I had had a friend of mine who was a Reiki um is it called a Reiki master? I don't really know, but she can do like reads on people and sort of, you know, put her hands over somebody and it, it, the energy will draw her hands to a certain part of their body. And that certain part could either be like in pain or it could be like kind of telling of where that person is in their life. So he was like me, you know, practicing Reiki, it really makes me very keen on people's energies. And I I sense that there's there's something attached to you. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? what are you talking about? And he's like, I don't want to freak you out, but I sense two things attached to you. And I was sensing them as you were talking to JJ, like as you were talking to JJ and you were talking more and more and more about the things that had happened last night, these things that are attached to you were kind of becoming more and more and more present. The first one is just a small little thing. You probably picked it up at a bar. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, when you drink alcohol, and I already kind of knew this part, when you are under the influence of something, whether it be alcohol, sleep deprivation, depression, you're just like not all there. It kind of like pokes holes in your aura and it makes it easier for spirits to sort of like attach itself to you. I know it sounds crazy, but I read about this kind of stuff before. So him telling me did not sound all that out of the ordinary. I had heard things like this happening. And he said, I know it sounds kind of strange, but it's actually very common for people to pick up bad energy at bars because people get drunk and their bad energy comes out and sort of attaches onto people that are very much under the influence and they kind of take that shit home with them. It made sense to me. Did I believe that it was happening to me? I don't know. But like at the time I was like, okay, very interesting. He goes, the little one you don't need to worry about. It's the other one that I'm really concerned about. And I was like, okay, what is the other one? And he said, it's a very big energy, very angry, and someone gave it to you. And I was like, okay, who gave it to me? And he said, do you have somebody in your life who is a man who had anger issues and you had to like be around them and live with them for a long time? I didn't elaborate, but I said, yes. 
I did. And he's like, I know you know who I'm talking about. That's the person that this energy came from. He goes, I'm kind of getting the feeling that this was somewhat of a father figure. And that's when I stopped him. He wasn't talking about my actual father, but he was definitely heading in the direction of the person that I originally thought of when he even mentioned it to begin with. So I just kind of stopped him and I was like, okay, okay. So let's say this bad energy came from that person. That person's no longer in my life. So like, what am I supposed to do? And he basically said that the best thing to do was to, and this is so funny because like, I firmly believe in this. He said, it's gonna sound corny, but imagine a huge ball of light in your body and imagine all the pores in your skin open up and that light just shoots the light out of you and you are just a big glowing ball. That's what you need to imagine all the time. Imagine that that light is shining so bright through your body that it's filling your entire apartment. He said that my mental state matters a lot and I need to focus on being happy and only having positive light energy in my house and around me at all times and eventually this thing will have nothing left to feed off of anymore and that actually made a lot of sense because it was kind of at my very very low point that weird things would start happening in my apartment even if he's not right and even if this dark energy doesn't exist maybe me being in these low points in life does manipulate my mental state and cause me to feel like I'm feeling these things or having these bad dreams where I feel like I feel a whisper in my ear. Or, you know, maybe it's all connected to my mentality, which again, makes him correct. I really should be in like a very positive, open space and energy all the time. So I was like, okay. Even though I was taking in all of the information, when he started to talk about where or who he thinks this dark, being came from, I started to get really upset. And so I stopped him and I left and I walked out onto Hollywood Boulevard and I called my mom and I was crying to her. And I had never done anything like this before. So my mom knew that it was really serious. And my mom was also very religious. So I vented to her everything that had happened the night before. She immediately got into her car, drove six hours to California from Arizona to bless my apartment for me. And I remember being in the apartment and she just walked a full lap all around the apartment and prayed. And she told me it's weird because I don't feel like I feel anything in here. I don't feel like there's a ghost or anything like that in here. And again, that made sense to me because I feel like the bad energy was coming from me. Maybe he was right and I had something attached to me Whatever the case was, me being in a negative state, obviously, according to him, fed the energy and allowed it to take over my life a little bit more, which would put me in an even more depressed state. But like I said, even if it's not paranormal, my bad energy was creating more bad energy. So my mom kind of verified that for me when she said, I don't feel like it's your apartment. So my mom and I sat down and we prayed for a long time. And after that, I made a conscious effort to make sure that I only had positive thoughts. I really did imagine a bright light coming from me at all times, and I still do, and I still think that's really important. Like, it makes a difference, you know? It helped me a lot to just constantly stay in a very positive state of mind and to truly imagine my apartments, all of them, all the ones I've ever lived in, to just be filled, absolutely filled with love, light and positivity that there is no room for any negative energy to squeeze in. Like I envision that, I manifest that, I think about it every day. I did eventually end up taking my car in, they had to flush the whole system out and it was expensive, but um, you know, it was fine, it works, I still have it. Um, oh, I totally forgot to mention. So the night that I got home from like the really weird night and I said I went to take a shower and I said that I heard a weird thing in the living room, the next day I found out what that sound was. I can't believe I left this out, I'm so sorry. There was a picture of me and my sister in a picture frame on the bookshelf in my living room. The next day I noticed that it had been knocked over and I picked the picture frame up to prop it back up again. 
See, this is, a, I can't believe I left this out. This is the reason why I believed that it was paranormal. The picture in the picture frame wasn't in there anymore. It was laying on the shelf next to the picture frame and the back of the picture frame was out. So like, I don't even know how that happened. Could the picture frame have just fallen over and in that event, the picture popped out? I guess so, but that just doesn't seem probable. I don't even know what to say about that. I don't know if it's a spirit or what it is, but he was saying that it feeds off of my negative energy. And it's just weird to me that when I have one bad thing that makes me come home and I feel really like spooked and scared, then the picture frame knocks over and then the whisper wakes me up. And then, you know, like it just kind of like, it's just really weird anyways. It was without a doubt one of the weirdest nights of my life, just because I couldn't explain it. Honestly, even still to this day, just the thought of me and him walking around in that parking structure for two hours, not saying a word to each other. I feel like we lost time. Like that's how it felt. There is no way it was two hours. Like it just makes no sense to me. Like I, in my right mind, I would never roam around the same level of a parking structure for two hours. I would never do that. I would lose my patience and be like, okay, my car's not here. Like somebody stole it. Like we need to call the police. Like I would have, I would have moved on. I just would not do that. I would never do that. And I don't think any person would. So it just like, it freaks me out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I know it was a weird one. I've always kind of wanted to share the story, but like number one, I don't know how to tell it in a way that it makes sense because it doesn't. And it just kind of felt kind of random. But now with it being Halloween season, maybe it's, you know, in the right spirit to share this experience. So if you guys have any theories on what you think happened, let me know. Unless you think that I was like possessed, then don't fucking tell me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the story and I will see you in the next one.